in meters. It's not a very long distance. So once it's and therefore there will be needed a lot more transmitters that transmit within within the city, a lot more than there used to be. Fifth generation. What will it provide? Provide an order of magnitude improvement at how many times more in virtual ubiquitous that they will have lots, a lot more connections, more groups, bigger groups of devices to be connected to, more capacity to, do, to send a lot more data simultaneously, ultra high bandwidth. So the, the, the range of frequencies that would be utilized is quite high compared to the previous systems. There will be a lower latency, that's a much less delay than experienced in previous generations. And more mobility, will allow more devices to move a lot more and faster as well. And connections for individual users and connected objects, they'd be huge improvement as well. You know, the maximum of probability of a million devices in a square kilometer. And greater distribution of computing storage, because you can store information now anywhere, you can get it at almost a minute de uh, delay. And increased or almost negligible delay. And there is increased reliability and availability as well. So there will be a lot less broken down, you know, device doesn't work, you know, there are plenty more uh, connections that can provide your call to continue without being interrupted. So, devices must comply with safety standards. They, they were a bit concerned about the safety standards, but it's always been put aside that they are okay, they're safe. So the international standards have placed certain standards and they should be adhered to, uh, so a device should have a certain amount of uh, EMF or electromagnetic force, but also they should be efficient and reduce the radiation uh, that they generate. The networks should also be very efficient with the EMF and the environment is supposed to be, uh, levels may increase slightly near sites or near uh, the, the, the Transmission masts for the main area, there will definitely be higher electromagnetic force, but it's still within the, the acceptable health um, and environmental levels. EMF compliance zone evaluation, um, the levels are, are still under investigation and they actually might even reduce them <laughs> further. So, in general, what's, what does 5G do? Some people say it does the 3Ds, more devices, more, that's more mobile connectivity, not just mobile, any device. There'll be devices, there'll be home devices, there'll be cars connected, factories, device, machines, there'll be a lot more room to connect all these devices and the future needs all these. Like in, in factories, almost every machine will have its own connectability, <coughs> they'll be communicating with the other machines. Cars in the future, somebody talked about cars, one of the colleagues talked about intelligent self-driving cars. In fact, they say people who are born this year, they will never have to do a driver's license. So by say 20 years, there'll be, you don't have to learn to drive a car. They'll probably just use their mobile phone, put the address in and, and sit in the car and the car will drive it. Right, but somebody said in Libya here, you don't really need the driver's license. I've seen kids driving without driver's license here. So, but out there, they say you don't have to do a driving test. It's, it's a real tough test. So luckily, they don't have to do it. But also, the 5G will, will provide less latency, that's less delay. So the delay will be minute. And the cost will be cheaper, because it, even though it costs a lot to build it, but Overall, uh, divided by the number of users and all that, the cost will, will actually go down. And it will also cause less interference. And they say it will, cost, it will have more security, <coughs> which it will provide a lot more programs, encryption systems, and things like that to, to be implemented easily. But 
it's a little bit debatable. The security can be also can be very dangerous if, if you are open to the world that much. It, things can be dangerous. Uh, remember to find the exact, you know, humanly acceptable and environmentally acceptable levels of radiation, and they say it's well within. And it is. It's a lot, very low radiation caused by one device to transmit a signal at higher frequency at a very short range. I'll talk about that now in a, few, in a minute or two. So then there's more efficient <laughs> energy consumption, that is, that is absolutely clear and true, and more efficient service, service creation time, and more efficient hardware flexibility. So there'll be a lot more flexible hardware that hopefully will be able to operate. And, you know, if there's a failure, there'll always be a backup, so reliability is going to be much better. So the main applications for 5G, <coughs> what do they use? What, you know, why do we bring in a, a 5 G, why do we need it? And mobile phone communication is obviously the first and main user, but it's by no means it's the only one. Smart homes are becoming now, you know, a, a bigger business. Now you can, you can, it's already available. You can go through the internet, switch your heating on out there in London or in a cold country when you leave the work. So by the time you get home, the whole the house is warm. And you don't have to leave the heating on all the time, or you, you change your mind, you're not going home, then you can switch it off. So home, smart homes, not just being able to do it remotely, that's not very smart nowadays. It's being able, that this computer that controls that at home, it controls the security of the home, mm -hmm. that controls the alarms, that controls your fridge, your freezer, maybe coffee machine in the morning. Um, if it rains, you might want to close windows. So these are the kind of smart homes. Smart cities is a big, going to be user of 5G. <coughs> Smart cities where buildings are, are being computerized, where maybe transportation, public transport is being also controlled or monitored through 5G, where people communicate with cars, cars communicate with buildings, with traffic lights. I'm just talking about the traffic lights again. I'm, Again, I was in a taxi here, and they actually, as my friend talked earlier on, is that they drive through the red lights. That's fine, you know, and I was really worried. Every time it goes through the red light, I hang on here. And then the green light, and he stopped. <laughs> and that's, he was worried about the other side. So, but that's fine. After a little while, you get relaxed, or you get immune to it, so it's okay. Peak data rate, okay. switch to English. This, this, this diagram shows the total improvements in many situations in different fields. So the peak data rate, that the total amount that you can transmit at any given time, it will improve 20 times. The user experience data rate, individual user, one user, will improve 100 times using the 5G. The spectrum efficiency will increase three times, but you'll have more user or more spectrum that's availability, more frequencies available. 500, 500 times is the mobility, the amount of increase in the number of mobile devices within one square kilometer. The latency will decrease 10 times at least. Connection density. The connection density is the number of devices that will be connected in one single square co computer and it's increased one million times, or it can reach a million users per one square kilometer. How is it possible? Why? 5G can do all this to provide as much number of users, as many communications. It's the name of the radio multiplexing technologies. First, the radio frequencies that became available. Only now, they made the radio frequencies, the high frequency radio signal became available now to communication technologies. And also, the multiplexing. You can actually connect a group of signals. You want to send a message for a number of users. You can actually use one, one frequency and transmit all those 10 signals or 100 signals through one frequency and split them at the other end. It's called multiplexing. So there are newer multiplexing technologies that have been developed over the last 10 years. New efficient spectrum usage technique that's the different frequencies 
and they use a different uh, different techniques that have been implemented. And new energy saving mechanisms, they can do that at much lower power consumption. And the newer spectrum, some of the devices, some of the techniques that were used is the beam forming, that's changing the beams. You can now instead of just transmitting a wireless signal, broadcasting it to everybody, you can actually change the shape of the beam, the direction of the beam, the, the, the angle of the beam, and that makes it a lot more efficient and you can transmit a lot more. Simultaneous transmissions receiving and sending, and the antenna muting, in, again, something else. If there's no transmission nowadays, they'll switch off the antenna. In the past, you used to always transmit a signal. They call it the carrier signal. You always send a signal. And if there is some data to be transmitted, well, change the signal and the receiver will receive it. But there's always a signal being transmitted by the transmitter. Now they went into the next phase. They, if there's no signal transmit, there's no data to transmit, mute the antenna, that means shut it down, save it energy. Well, this, I've already talked about this. This just shows the, the newer transmission beams that have been changed in shape and power and direction. And also the tremendous consensus and agreement that happened and took place between the international communities. Usually, before any new technology comes on, every manufacturer makes their own devices. And then it takes a long time to get them to to be unified. Remember, maybe with the old technologies of video cassettes, everybody's making their own size. They never got to be unified. The television technology as well, they're still different. You buy a TV from America, it won't work in Europe. When you buy it in Europe, it won't work in Japan. With computing technology, they've always been able to, to get ahead of the technology. Before the manufacturer come up with the new ideas, the standard standardized organization, they get together, they got together, you know, quite a few, many years ago, more than 10 years ago, and they tried to put the standards, and they did manage, and they did a lot of consensus, a lot of common interest, in, a lot of collaborative work, and once they got all this done, and they put the standards in, and now manufacturers are all kind of sticking to the same time. There's still some countries who say, we can't give the six giga, we give 26, some others give three, but they are reasonably close enough. And any mobile phone, hopefully manufactured in any country, it should work in any other country. So these are some of the international organizations that did tremendous work over the last 10 years. They've been working for many years, but this is the International Trans Telecommunication or International Transport Union. And they have a vision group. In Europe, they had a number of projects, framework, program 7, and 5G PPP horizon. In Germany, they had the 5G lab, Germany. So they, these people have been working for a while, putting standards, doing some research, and improving the, the development. And these are actually the countries that eventually ended up implementing the 5G. China, Japan, Korea, Taiwan, Russia, all these people have been working together over the last few years. So, and these are people who are actually either working or manufacturing. These are just a sample of the organizations that are doing the work. And each of them, some of them are doing different parts of the work. The ITU is probably putting stand standards and others are implementing applications. Some are working on the hardware. And now, even though they've been testing 5G for the last few years in, in many countries, but commercially, they've started actually rolling them out. They started in March last year, 2019, they had 15 operators in the world that actually launched the new system, the 5G. Now there are 33 operators who have rolled out commercial 5G services globally around the world. So over 20, over 20 countries now, they have 5G actually running and they include Australia, Bahrain, Estonia, Finland. Finland is one of the leading countries. They actually started the sixth generation uh, research at the moment. Italy, Kuwait, Lesotho, Poland, Qatar. So a lot of the Gulf states, they've, they've already got the fifth generation implemented. Romania, Saudi Arabia, South Africa, South Korea. South Korea is a major 
contributors.